So up at the lab, we looked at some possible precipitation reactions between our unknown substance and a bunch of ions. And we have those right here, and we can see the results that we have. So the results that we have is we saw three products being formed where we have a reaction occur, where we form a precipitate. Now the negative reactions as well tell us something and inform us something about what's happening, right? So we added magnesium ions, uh, zinc ions, silver ions, and aluminum ions, and we saw no reaction for each of those here. Then we also added calcium ions, lead ions, and barium ions, and we saw a precipitation or a formation of a precipitate from these. And so if we went back and we looked at our solubility rules to kind of identify what has a characteristic reactivity like we see here with those different metal ions, and we summarize all those together, what we notice is that this is gonna tell us that we have the sulfate ion present in this solution. Uh, and so our unknown has the negative ion of the solute present here uh, and so then that tells us that now we've got to figure out what is the positive ion the metal that goes goes with it so our precipitation reactions give us the ability to indicate that we have sulfate here and again we did that after measuring our conductivity and found that our conductivity jumped up when we added this compound indicating that it is an ionic compound let's look at the reactions or tests that we did to identify what the other pieces are so our precipitation reactions gives us the ability to identify what negative ion or anion we have uh, and so now what we can do is we can jump over and look at well how do we figure out the positive ion as well as the waters of hydration we see there's two possible ways that our metal can combine with sulfate depending on what the ion charge is if we have a two plus charge for that metal, there'll be a one to one mole ratio. That is because our sulfate ion has a two minus charge. If we have a plus one charge here for our metal, we're going to have a two to one mole ratio. And again, that's because we need two positive one charges to give us the equivalent of our negative two charge for our sulfate. So this is gonna inform us a little bit of how we might determine what our metal is. Now we also need to figure out what this n value is here, right? This n value here is the mole ratio between the moles that we would see of water to the moles of sulfate. Uh, and this is what we classify as our waters of hydration. So this can be equivalent to however many moles of water we have for every one mole of sulfate that we might see. And so we see that's gonna be our endpoint in trying to figure out what that water of hydration is by looking at the mole ratio between those there. Now experimentally, we can't really easily measure our mole ratio, right? We can measure our mass ratio, but we not, can't very easily measure our mole ratio. So what we wanna do is we wanna see how can we figure out what that mole ratio is from the mass measurements that we have here. And so we're gonna do this through two experimental tests. One of them is we created a precipitate with barium and sulfate, because we found that that is an insoluble substance that forms with our barium and sulfate ions. And that's gonna tell us something about the sulfate amount. And then we're gonna look at the release of water through when we heat it, and that's gonna tell us the amount of water that we might see here. And so let's go ahead and look at our first set of data that we have. What we did is we took our solid and we reacted it with barium ions by adding barium chloride. So we have 0 0.504 grams of the unknown. And what we did is we added 50 milliliters of three molar barium chloride. And what that tells us is that we're gonna have an excess, a bunch of barium ions. So it's not gonna limit how much precipitate we form. The sulfate that we originally had in there is gonna limit how much precipitate we form. And that's gonna precipitate out all of the sulfate present. Looking at this reaction here, we have our barium reacting with our sulfate to form this insoluble barium sulfate. After we filtered it and dried it out, we found the mass of a barium sulfate was 0.477 grams. Now what we wanna be able to do from this data is we want to be able to identify what is the mass percent of our sulfate ion. And we're gonna do that by looking at the data that we have here. And again, we wanna do this for our unknown. So for the unknown, we wanna find the experimental mass percent of sulfate. So that's gonna be the mass of our sulfate that we have divided by our total mass, and then we make that a percentage. Now we notice we already have our total mass, our 0 0.504 grams. But then what we need to do is we need to figure out, well, how much sulfate do we have in 
this 0.477 grams, right? We made this 0.477 grams of barium sulfate, not all of that sulfate. So we got to figure out how much of that is just sulfate. One way we can do that is by looking at what is the theoretical mass percent of sulfate in barium sulfate. And we can use that to figure out how much sulfate is in that mass of barium sulfate. Let's go ahead and do that. So again, we look at the mass of I have one mole of this substance of sulfur and oxygen for our sulfate divided by the total mass of sulfur, oxygen, and barium. Again, if we have one mole here, that is gonna get us a theoretical mass percent of 41.16% sulfate in our barium sulfate. Now we can use that with the data that we have here to figure out how much just sulfate we have in that 0.477 grams. So we go ahead and we find that we have 0.196 grams of sulfate in our 0.477 grams of barium sulfate. And again, we just converted our percentage to a decimal form and we can multiply that by the mass of barium sulfate that we had originally to find out how much is just sulfate. So now we have the amount of sulfate and we have the ability now to take that and put it back in here in our original equation. So now we have the mass of sulfate, the total mass, and then we can find our percent of sulfate in the unknown here. Now by looking at the mass of sulfate that we have, the original mass of our unknown, we find that we have a mass percent of 38.9% of sulfate in the original unknown. Now that tells us something about any sample size because our mass percent is, in, is independent of sample size. But that is only one piece. There's three pieces, our metal, our sulfate, and our water part here. So the next data point that we have is gonna give us the ability to find out the amount of water that we have. Let's go ahead and look at that data. So our data here is that we heat this hydrate to get rid of water. So the water is attached to this solid compound and as we heat it, the water goes away. So when we start with 0.485 grams of our unknown and we heat it, we have 0.237 grams remaining after our final heating. So that difference in mass is going to be the mass of water lost, right? So that's gonna be the mass of water that we originally had in our substance. So we wanna go ahead and say, well, let's find that here. So we start with the amount that we, we had originally, then we subtract from it the mass that's remaining. So effectively that's everything outside of water. And we find that we had originally 0.248 grams of water. Now, just like we did with our sulfate, we can find the mass percent of water by looking at the mass of that water divided by our total mass. So we found that we had 0.248 grams of water and we started with 0.485 grams total for our sample. And then we can go ahead and make it a percentage. And we find that we have 51.1% water. So now again, we have two of the three pieces. So we have the amount of water by percentage. We have the amount of sulfate by percentage. So last piece now that we're gonna be able to identify is the amount of metal indirectly because we didn't directly make any measurements of our metal masses or anything, but we do know there's only three pieces and we know two out of three, we can figure out that third one there. And so now we can go ahead and find out the mass percent of our metal by taking the fact that we know all of it's gonna add up to 100% and we're gonna subtract the two pieces that we already know. And so we find that we have 10.0% by mass of our metal. So now we have, we wanna think about summarizing our results. We have the mass percent of our metal is going to be 10%. We have the mass percent of our sulfate, the other piece, that's 38.9%. And then we also have the mass percent of water, which is 51.1%. And so now we have the ability to identify our mass relationships. So that doesn't tell us our empirical formula. Our empirical formula is based upon the mole ratios.
but we don't have masses yet. We just have percentages. And again, our percentages are independent of sample size. So if we want to make this just easier on ourselves, because our percent is out of 100, if we just say we have 100 grams of our unknown sample, that just makes our percentages into a mass in grams, just to make it easy on ourselves. Now that we have our mass relationships, we want to use that information to figure out our empirical formula. Now let's go ahead and do that. So if we look at the results that we have so far is that we have a mass of metal, a mass of sulfate, and a mass of water. Now, if I want to think, what am I trying to figure out here? Like, what is our goal? Our goal is to determine our empirical formula. And we needed to do two things to be able to do that. First off, we need to identify what is our metal. Secondly, we need to identify what the waters of hydration that we have, that N value there. Uh, and if we go back to what we thought about and considering originally, that that N value is the mole ratio of our water to sulfate. Well, if we know the mass of sulfate and we know the mass of water, we have the ability to convert those to moles. Let's go ahead and do that. Now we have the uh, mole amount of sulfate and water. Now again, our empirical formula is based upon our mole ratios, so we can go ahead and use these two here to find out our N value. Because our N value is the moles of water divided by the moles of sulfate. So now we see that that N value is pretty close to seven, and that tells us that we have seven waters of hydration in our compound here. So I don't, you know, we figured out how many waters we have present for every one mole of this ionic compound. The next thing that we need to figure out, what is our metal? And we think we can't use just our metal mass and convert that to moles or anything because we don't know what our molar mass is. But if we want to identify what our metal is, one good tool that we use is we can go ahead and find out what the molar mass is of that metal, and that's gonna to correspond to one element. Now again, because there was two possible mole ratios, there's two possible molar masses that we might found. So let's go ahead and look at finding those here. Now again, we can have an M plus charge. That is if our formula is M2SO4, or we can have an M2 plus if that's our mole ratio is MSO4. And again, this tells us the relative mole ratio that we'd find for each of these. Our first one here is a two to one mole ratio. And so if we have the information about sulfate already, we know in our 100 grams, we have 0 0.405 moles of sulfate. We already found that, right? We were looking at the fact based upon the 38.9 grams of sulfate. Well, I wanna go ahead and use my mole ratio here, that two to one mole ratio to find out how many moles of metal I would have. Cause we know that mole ratio, if it's a two to one mole ratio here. And so we can find out the moles of metal. So now we have the moles of our metal here based upon our mole ratio. And again, we said we're gonna find out two possible molar masses. Now again, reminding us our molar mass is the ratio of mass per moles. And so if we wanna find the molar mass of our metal here, we know that we had 10 grams of our metal in that 100 grams because it was 10% by mass of our metal. And now we found we have 0 0.810 moles of our metal. And that's gonna give us a molar mass that we might find for this specific metal. Go ahead and calculate that. And we find that our molar mass here is 12.3 grams per mole. Okay, so that was our first one. Let's go ahead and do that same thing for that one-to-one -one mole ratio and find out what molar mass we might get here. So now with our one-to-one -one mole ratio, we get a molar mass of 24.7 grams per mole. Now we look at those two and we wanna think, okay, which of those might be my metal here? And the best way for us to do that is we look at our periodic table. Now again, the closest element that we have to 24.7 is magnesium. Uh, and that is because our magnesium is 
And then we look, look at our other one there, 12.3. We find the closest one to that, that would be carbon, 12.011. Now our final step is to say, A, is that a metal? And B, does it make the charge that it's supposed to? And again, this should be a plus one charge for our metal one, two to one mole ratio. This should be a plus two charge. Now carbon, right off the bat, we know is a non-metal and it doesn't make a plus one charge. So we know that that is not likely our unknown. But then we go over to our other metal, it makes a plus two charge, magnesium. Yes, that is a metal. As well, magnesium is group two and it tends to make a plus two charge. So then now we've identified what our metal is based upon our molar mass. Let's go ahead and round all that information together with our final results. So we found finally that our metal was magnesium. So this is magnesium sulfate. And then we have seven waters of hydration here uh, for our compound. And so we've identified our empirical formula. We can look at that empirical formula and we can say that that is safe to be in water because it's not gonna do anything to us. If we have some magnesium and sulfate ions, obviously we don't wanna be drinking a lot of that, uh, but that's something that we could ingest. It's not like we'd, we have in this water sample here, something like lead, which could be problematic for us. Uh, and so we are able to identify our empirical formula by looking at the kind of analysis of the amount of sulfate, the amount of water, because we knew what those were. And then from that, finding the amount of our metal here. And so we were successful. We identified what this substance was. And so then that's when we reported that to Dean Eba to tell him everything was good to go and he gave the approval.